Welcome back to episode 2 of Mastering MetaHuman. In today's episode, we're going to be exploring different ways you could animate your MetaHuman using Unreal Engine. Let's get started. Alrighty, we're going to continue where we left off in last episode. You can see right now I'm in a new Unreal Engine project uh, just after importing in my MetaHuman. If we go into the MetaHumans folder within content, we can see our MetaHumans name pop up here. Go ahead and click that, and then the Blueprint class. If you click on the viewport here, we can maximize the view. We can see the character that we made in the MetaHuman Creator. Once you have that, close out that for the moment being. And what we're going to want to do is go into MetaHuman's Common, Common Utilities and find this MetaHuman Control Rig Picker. Right click on that and run Editor Utility Widget. It's going to open up the Animation Picker kind of optimize the window there and we're going to go up to the content tab again let's create a new folder and we're going to call this level sequences within level sequences we can right click navigate to cinematics level sequence or alternatively if you ever need to find something you can just type in level sequence up at the top here with that created we're just going to call it ls underscore test Go ahead and hit enter, and we could go ahead and right click, save. Now, go ahead and double click on that level sequence to open it up. In older versions of Unreal Engine, you'd have the content browser instead of this content drawer, which gets a little bit annoying dealing with some of this, but if you move around in the viewport, you'll see the sequencer open up. This could be equated to the timeline in Maya or the uh, story track area within Motion Builder. And here, what we could do is open up our content drawer, reduce the size of it a little bit so we can see both of them, go into content, metahumans, open up our metahuman, and drag our blueprint into this area here. This will add our blueprint metahuman as a spawnable character within the sequence. So if we close the sequence, the character will despawn from the level, making it a little bit more optimized if you're not working within the level sequence. Now, we have the viewport selected, and we have our character clicked on the sequencer. Go ahead and press F in the scene to focus it. A couple of the hotkeys I use within Unreal Engine are right click and WASD to navigate. And with right click, click selected, you can mouse scroll up to increase the speed of the camera and mouse scroll down to slow it down as well. Those are going to be the main navigation tools I use within the viewport here. In the picker, you can go ahead and refresh the actor here. You should see face and body appearing now that we have our character within the scene. We go ahead and select body and when we click on any of these controls, you're going to see them highlighted in the outliner here. We could also Make sure that you have the animation mode selected. You go up here, might be on selection, landscape, whatever it is. You're going to want to click on animation or press shift eight for the hotkey. With that selected, you can press the hide control shapes to show and hide the different control rig for the character. Keep in mind, a lot of your settings might be hidden by default. So go ahead and open the metahuman control rig underneath the body node. And within here, you're going to see all the different controls listed. In the global control, if you expand that and scroll down, you're going to see arm IK, FK switches, show body controls, a bunch of different other options here. Play around with them, you'll see they're very similar to different options you might see in the typical Maya rig. For now, we're going to put the arms into IK, and we're going to click the show body controls option. Now you're going to see the different spine handles pop up, the head controls, the arm controls, everything that we're going to need to animate this character. For this animation, I'm just going to do a quick test. I'm going to leave it at 30 FPS, but if you need to change the frame rate, feel free to do that right here. And if you need to change how long an animation is, you could use these sliders down here. Let's say if you want it to be 500 frames, set these both to 500, and you could expand this here all the way to the end. That'll make it so you have a full 500 frame count animation. Now, let's get animating. First off, we're going to want to select the control in either the viewport, the picker, or in the sequencer. Sequencer could be a bit troublesome because you got to scroll all the way up and down all the time. 
So I recommend using the picker or the handy dandy controls within the viewport. You could go ahead and click on a control in the viewport, manipulate it with whatever you want to manipulate it, whether it's translation, rotation, undoing could be a little bit troublesome as you could see there. Uh, but you can see you could rotate, see the hands are in I case, they're locking into place there. And once you have something that you want, let's say we rotate them back like this, let's also go to the first frame, you can see it holds that pose because we don't have any keys set yet. So let's go back to frame number zero, and if you press enter, it'll drop a key for that control right there. Alternatively, you could hit the little add new keyframe at this uh, current frame. And now you can see it will hold that for that frame. Let's jump up to frame 120, for example, and we're going to rotate it back to a forward position and press enter once again. Now, if we scrub the timeline between frame zero and 120, you're gonna see that interpolation between those two poses. What we could also look into is the animation keys in the curve editor. We open that up, we can see the spine zero one control. You can see that the tangents on this are cubic, meaning that it has a smooth in and out interpolation. That's why it's not like a linear snap right when it starts moving. It kind of has that ease in and ease out effect. If you want to change that, there's a bunch of different options within the editor. Let's go ahead and isolate just the rotation roll for this example. And if you select them and press three, one, two, three, four, four. <laughs> four will make them linear tangents. If you expand the curve window, you're gonna see all the options here. There they are. So you can make it stepped, linear, cubic, whatever you need. It's gonna be auto tangents, cubic. So go ahead and play around with whatever that is that you need there. Just for example, I'll show you what linear looks like in the viewport, as well as stepped. Oops, let's rewind that. Hit play. It's a lot more rigid, a little bit more robotic, a lot less human-like than a cubic interpolation might be. Additionally, we could hit the stepped, and this is just gonna be a snap from one pose to the other. You can see the hair kind of glitching out too because it has the anim dynamics or sim, whatever it has by default on there. So those are the basics of, you know, manipulating different controls, saying keys, and manipulating their tangents using the sequencer curves. I'm going to go through a bit of an animation sequence, um, just making a quick little animation, and I'll make it a time lapse so you can kind of see the process, slow it down if you need to. But yeah, I'll see you in a few minutes. One quick more thing before I dive into the little time lapse is I want to point out the facial controls. Our first off right here, a bunch of different stuff you could do with this as well, uh, but mainly this is going to be like body dynamics, different things like that in this video. But yeah, just know that those are there. And then in the top right, if you have a control, let's say this one right here, and or let's grab one on a different angle here. You can see that the pivot point is oriented for the world. If you click on this up here, it's going to orient it to the actual bone or control itself. So most of the time, you're probably gonna be wanting to work in object space like this. And so if you see the little world icon here, just know that that's where you can change it. Uh, lastly, a lot of times you're gonna see these enabled here. If you see these as blue, this is snapping for different rotation and transformations. So if you have this enabled, you're only gonna be able to rotate in 10 degree uh, iterations, which is probably not ideal. So you could just turn that off or set this to a lower value. Normally I'll just turn it off here and you're gonna get much smoother uh, rotations there. Now, lastly, in the MetaHuman Control Rig Picker, you're gonna have it on the body here and you can switch from IK, FK directly within the picker as well. So you don't always have to go into the, into the global control and edit all that here. Um, along with body controls, you could enable and disable them within the picker as well. So have fun animating and I'll see you in a bit.
Alrighty, so this is where I got to with the animation. It's just a quick, simple little jump. No level of polish here, just blocking it in real quick. So you can see the little jump with the controls on. And if we hide control shapes, we let this play. You can see a similar thing there too. Okay, so once you have your animation, let's say it's perfect and you want to implement it into gameplay or you want to export out to an animation sequence, there are two ways that we're going to be doing this. So keep in mind the body and the face are two separate skeletons, so you're going to have to export them separately. We're going to start with the body. You could right click on it and you're going to be looking at bake animation sequence and create linked animation sequence as well. What we're going to do first is open up your content drawer again and create a new folder called this animation. Now we could go back to the body and the sequencer and do a bake animation sequence. Go ahead and minimize the metahumans folder and we're going to see the animation folder right here. So we could change the animation name to as underscore for animation sequence and we're just going to call this jump bake test. Okay, if that's selected this might be minimize as default. You go ahead and expand it. Nothing too much we're going to be changing in here, but something worth looking into if you're having difficulties later on. Then you're going to want to hit this export to animation sequence button. And within a second or two, you should see an animation sequence created. Uh, by default, it's going to probably have this weird, probably not even showing the bones, probably look a little bit like this, which probably isn't ideal. It's hard to visualize what's actually going on here. You might have another kind of geometry or body mesh that you could show, but if not, you could also go to character, bones, all hierarchy, and it's gonna show the bones animated, how you're looking at them. Alternatively, let's say we want to mute this metahuman control rig. We're gonna mute both of these just for the time being. And what we could do is add a new track onto the body. And we're gonna add an animation track with our new bait test. So sometimes when you add it, it'll add it way past where you had it selected initially. Um, so go ahead and drag that back to frame zero and we could test to see the animation on the character here. And this is without the metahuman control rig on it at all. Now, alternatively, we could take the other approach. Let's go ahead and delete this animation layer. We could see it's still being driven by that control rig. So what we could do is right click on this control rig and oops, sorry, right click on the body skeleton and do create linked animation sequence. What this is going to do is create a live kind of link, not live link as Unreal Engine also has, but it's going to create a link between the control rig and the animation sequence. So whenever you make future changes to the animation sequence within the control rig, it's going to update the actual export animation sequence. We'll do a quick test here. Go ahead and click that, click on animation again, and we're going to do animation sequence, jump, link. Okay, export to animation sequence. And again, we're going to see this linked version pop up. It's going to look exactly as the other one did, but this one is linked. So if we go in here, metahuman control rig, and let's change this jump to be absolutely astronomical. I think that's the peak. Let's go ahead and click this. Just make it way, way, way too high. Just so you could test. Okay, so it should just pop up crazy for one frame there. Go ahead and save everything out. Now if we open this up again, we can see the character is now linked to that animation and it's updating the animation sequence in real time. Now next time I'm going to be diving into a little bit more of the advanced features of animating within Unreal Engine and more specifically animating within the MetaHuman. There's some new features to Unreal Engine 5.5 that I'm going to be making a video on and I'm hoping to include the Live Link ArcKit motion capture kind of system in there as well as some other features as well. So if that's something that you're looking forward to, stay tuned. All right, that brings us to the end of episode two of Mastering MetaHuman. This was the animation episode, and coming up next is going to show us how to edit the actual meshes and different parts of the MetaHuman to be a custom mesh. Keep on learning, and I'll see you in the next video.